Let's take a look at China's top five sins. I'm going to start out with an easy one here. IP theft. I mean, everybody knows that's what China's famous for, knocking off brands, right? Cheap Chinese knockoffs have flooded the markets, whether it's from LV bags to fake iPhones to you name it, you've seen it, we all know about it. This is, of course, not limited to international brands. Local Chinese brands get knocked off too. For instance, a very popular brand of Chinese gas station is Use Shut Up. For instance, up north, a very popular brand of gas station is You Smile. This is a Yuem Yuem List shop. So you could say U S M I L E. You know, they've just taken the same letters and jumbled them up and use the same design language and, and logo. But we get all caught up in this whole, oh, it's a fake LV or a fake iPhone story. There's something far more sinister going on here. It's way worse than you think. Because on multiple occasions, China's been called out by the World Trade Organization and other big organizations that China belongs to saying, you have to put a stop to this. You have to curb this stuff. And you know what? The Chinese government always promises that, oh yes, we're going to crack down on it. Don't you worry. Meanwhile, they don't crack down on it. In fact, they encourage it. They encourage industrial espionage. They encourage the theft of IP, especially military secrets. It's an open secret. Look at all of the military technology coming out of China these days. They are complete knockoffs of American and other military products from around the world. Look at the stupid Huawei MacBook knockoffs. Look at the Huawei phones, for instance. In fact, look at Huawei. They built their entire company on stealing IP from companies like Nortel. And in fact, forced companies like Nortel to go under because what they were doing was stealing all their technology and then undercutting and selling their own technology back to their respective markets. It's pretty awful. There's a lot we can talk about when it comes to IP theft, but that's definitely a big one. And it's had huge repercussions around the world. It's led to the loss of jobs, revenue, and it's actually led to people not wanting to innovate or invent simply because if you put in that effort and you spend the money on the R&D and you do all that hard work, a Chinese company is simply going to steal it from you and undercut you in your own market. So why bother in the first place? Remember, China isn't some kind of big innovator just because you see things like uh, electric bicycles and uh, so-called green technology and so on being pushed and high-speed rails. Remember that China invented none of those things. In fact, those technologies have been around for years. Sometimes, like for instance, e-bikes have been around since the 1800s. This isn't new stuff, guys. Now, before we get into this, when I say China didn't invent anything, I really mean it. Mainland China hasn't invented a single goddamn thing. And it's all because of the way society has been shaped under the leadership of the CCP. This isn't to say Chinese people haven't invented anything. In fact, we all know Taiwan, a country whose people are to a large extent the exact same ethnicity as mainland China, is the world's leader in microchip technology. Chinese Americans and Chinese people from other parts of the world are responsible for some of the most incredible innovations and inventions of the modern day. Yet China has yet to invent a single goddamn thing. Number two, overfishing the oceans. This is so big and I'm so disappointed that not enough people are paying attention to what China is doing with its clandestine illegal fishing fleets that go around the world and decimate the sea life, you name it, around the Galapagos, around the coasts of Africa, around the coasts of America and South America. There's not one part of the world's oceans that hasn't been touched by these filthy, underhanded, unscrupulous fishermen. In a similar vein, destroying the environment. And maybe you think it's okay. They're just destroying the environment in China. The fact that the drinking water is contaminated, 90% of drinking water in the cities, 80% of the drinking water in the rural areas has been contaminated. The land's contaminated. All this sort of nonsense. You might think that's a China problem, but it's not. Using banned chemicals in their factories, which of course they're building things for the rest of the world, but the reason why people choose China is because they're willing to turn a blind eye to environmental protection laws and rules and so on. The banned chemicals that they're willing to use has very recently led to a massive hole in the ozone layer. That of course affects everyone, including you. The plastic cities that we find floating in the sea, also a result of bad practices by Chinese companies. And in half an hour, this is how much plastic 
we picked up. Look at it. Can you write down here? Look at this. And I'm sorry. Chinese. 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 People of China, pick your fucking litter up. In fact, according to a 2017 study, around 90% of single-use plastic that pollutes our oceans comes from 10 rivers, six of which are in China. To say that China is the biggest contributor to the pollution in our oceans is an understatement. Chinese ships have been caught dumping human waste on endangered reefs, and a study of bottles washed ashore in various places around the world have concluded that the majority of the plastic bottles do originate from China. The next sin is COVID. I must remind everybody that it was the mishandling of the initial outbreak by the Communist Party of China that allowed COVID to spread internationally and affect every single one of you. Every single person's lives around the globe has in some way, shape or form been affected by COVID. When it was initially discovered in Wuhan by some doctors, they were silenced and forced to sign confessions that they were spreading rumors. When China knew that human-to-human -human transmission was happening, they fed false information to the World Health Organization. And of course, the leader of the World Health Organization is somebody that they had great sway and influence over because he is in the pocket of the Chinese Communist Party and owes his position in the World Health Organization to the Communist Party of China, etc., etc. The fact of the matter is that the World Health Organization was telling everybody that there's no human-to-human -human transmission because the Chinese government says so, and that there's nothing to worry about. Don't worry about shutting down travels. Don't worry about quarantines or health screening or anything like that. It's nothing to worry about. And at that exact same time, we had infected people flying out of Wuhan all over the globe, but not within China, because the Chinese government knew that it was human to human. So they stopped any flights going in and out of Wuhan domestically, but allowed them to fly internationally and spread this pandemic across the world. We also had people with strong ties to the Wuhan labs, etc., like Peter Daszak running interference and trying to shift blame elsewhere, which also muddied the waters. Whether or not you believe that COVID came from China, which of course it absolutely did, but if you believe it potentially came from somewhere else, it doesn't matter. The mishandling of the initial outbreak of the pandemic in China by the Communist Party of China is why this pandemic spread around the world. The next one, of course, is human rights. Don't take my word for it. Institutions like Freedom House and Amnesty International have very damning reports on how bad human rights in China actually are. You know, the thing about the Chinese human rights abuses is that they affect the Chinese people the most. Of course, the minorities in China suffer greatly like the Uyghurs and the Tibetans and any other minority that's deemed undesirable by the CCP but just the people themselves. Look at all the cases of mentally handicapped people being chained up in small dirty huts or chained to, up to trees and so on that you see in China. We saw the horrendous conditions that that poor human trafficked woman who is chained to the wall lived in. That's actually quite common around China. No joke, not making that up. We did a whole podcast on this. Look, the human rights issue is too big for me to cover in this quick little list video, and we have covered it extensively on our multiple channels and will continue to cover it in the future. I hope you found this list helpful. The purpose of this list is not to demonize China or Chinese people, but to point out the very blatant misdeeds of the Chinese Communist Party and what it has been getting away with for so many years. If we expect any kind of change, any kind of positive change to happen, not only for the entire world who's currently at peril, but the people of China themselves, we need to stand up to this bully and we need to let the Communist Party of China know that we're watching them. Anyway, until next time, guys, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome.